All right, folks, what's going on? This is Matt here for Dark One Linux Tech and Gaming, where this is the fusion of Linux technology and gaming. And we are looking at a video I was emailed to react to. And th there's a few curious things that I already noticed. I didn't read the description or anything. Just the title alone, as you can tell from the one above me. Switching to Linux. There's no factual statements, etc. So I always enjoy a good switching to Linux story about how it went, how it didn't go, etc. Because I'm, I'm very use whatever the hell works for you. So to me, uh, this should be really interesting. So let's get in to see what homeboy here has to say and, you know, kind of what his experience has been. Could be good, could be bad. Let's find out. About four to five days ago, I switched from Windows to Linux and I wanted to detail how that went. So for my entire life, I've been mainly using Windows and only last year started using Mac OS as my secondary operating system and while Windows has been good ever since Windows 11 I started to notice that general usability and performance started to decline ignoring the fact that Windows 11 is at least 1 to 2 percent slower on average despite changes like improvements to running foreground apps file explorer tabs dev home and some of the changes that it brought it didn't really help the experience all that much the fact that I could open Microsoft Edge faster than File Explorer was insane. Steam taking 30 to 40 seconds to open, and mandatory sluggishness. While I liked Windows, I liked Windows for Windows 10, Windows 8.1, Windows 7, and all of these versions have the same core features, which Windows 11 is on track record to keep removing or redoing. And I feel now that this situation with the current state of Windows parallels all the way back to Windows ME and Vista in a few ways. The deprecation of key features, the higher system requirements, but what I think is the root of all of these issues is the old Windows NT kernel. When Windows ME released, Windows 2000 was already out. Windows 2000 had the NT kernel and was marketed for business. Windows ME was marketed for consumers and had the Windows 9X kernel. The Windows NT kernel was fast and stable, but the older 9X kernel was slowly becoming more and more unstable, and this is why it would have been a better choice for Windows ME to make it successful, and ultimately why Windows XP succeeded. While the NT so overall, he's not wrong as far as like the ME stuff. Uh, I, I don't have a lot to say right now because it's it's not really Linux specific. Um, but the degradation of features and stuff that Microsoft's making your OS become a service. That's really what they're doing. Just look what they're doing the Xbox. All, all the content wise, it's becoming a service. They're looking for a perpetual revenue stream that uh, you know in, per uh, in perpetuity kind of stream where it's uh, it's just always there and i get it it's business i'm not going to say it's not however as a customer when you see features and functions being removed and replaced with you know ads in my fucking file browser it, it calls into question your product um you know I, I do have a windows 11 machine and steam is annoying as shit on it uh, Windows is annoying as shit. Example, the, the three-finger swipe up on, on the multi-touch trackpad. You're telling me on, on a i7 12th gen with, you know, I don't remember what the full specs are at this point, but, you know, on a 3070 Ti, I'm going to get jank on, on the expansion to view the different desktops and stuff? Like, give me a break. I don't even get that kind of jank on Linux. So I do find that a bit intriguing. But no, it, uh, the removal of features isn't something new. Uh, I, it's just a direction Microsoft's going with trying to make the OS more of a service as opposed to, you know, actually an OS. Which is why, like somebody I know would say, is Linux puts the personal back in computing. So... NT kernel was good back then, and first debuted for consumers in Windows XP, it's quite old today. When the Windows 10X emulator was released, it came with the Windows Core kernel. Windows 10X is limited, 
But when the Windows Core kernel gets to consumers, the root of all issues now may be fixed. In the meantime, I wanted to try something new. From what I've heard about Linux in the past, it was mainly an OS delegated to enthusiasts and developers, but now Linux can do pretty much everything that Windows can and better from what I've seen. I tried the Pop OS distro on my old gaming laptop, and it was kind of a similar experience to Windows, but at that point I had already been using Windows with a hard drive on that laptop, so the impact wasn't really that noticeable. I then tried Fedora 37 or 38, I can't remember, on my MacBook Air, and then also tried Pop OS again, but I ended up having to reset my entire drive because I messed up partitioning. So now I'm here, looking to install a distro. Pop OS is good for having out of the box experience with Nvidia drivers, but I felt like it was too hand holding. I thought that Fedora was too new and so I should probably go with something more stable. So I narrowed down my options to Ubuntu and Debian. But I like Ubuntu and its niceties, I've actually ruled it out as an option going forward because it's too snap centered from what I've seen and personally I prefer binaries or flat packs for my applications. But that wasn't why I chose Ubuntu initially, it was because Debian is known for being really stable and I wanted a comfortable out of the box experience and with Debian 12 just being released I decided to use it. I set up some goals for myself and the first thing was starting with setting up a desktop environment. I actually chose XFCE first time when I was installing Debian 12 because I heard that it was really smooth and fast and I liked the visual style of how it looked older, but little did I know that it was actually pretty legacy and even though I could probably configure it to something great, I decided against it because it was just too legacy for me. So I reinstalled Debian 12, which might I add, only took around 10-15 to 15 minutes, much faster than Windows. And I left the desktop environment to GNOME, which is the default. This time it had everything I needed and looked more modern, familiar, and it was better to use for me. Next I went ahead and installed the Nix package manager because I heard that it was pretty great for managing all types of packages, but I couldn't get it to work with non-free repositories, so I ended up removing it later down the line, which is unfortunate, but I could live without it anyways. Then I went ahead and installed the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, and honestly, it was just about the same as you would do on Windows. In fact, probably even easier and faster. I just typed one command, was told to reboot, and in less than a minute I'm back on with the proprietary NVIDIA driver. However, I wanted to make sure it worked, so I went ahead and installed Steam. The installation for Steam went flawlessly, and I was able to run a game through Proton, which is Steam's Windows game compatibility layer. Afterwards. I don't have a lot to really say. Uh, he's not going to be the, the target, like, quote unquote, new user. Like, if, like, he, he's more into tech, you know, because he talks about development and he talks about, um, you know, installing stuff through through Debian and whatnot, and doesn't like the hand holding that Pop OS and kind of Ubuntu, like, sorry, the niceties as it relates to Ubuntu that they have. So he's more technically inclined already. So Debian would make sense as far as his, his distro of choice. I mean, yeah, to each their own as far as it comes to the distros. So um, whether or not something's easier as opposed to Windows, that, that's relative. I will say that the update mechanism on a lot of stuff is a lot easier on Linux than it is on Windows. Looking at you, every single fucking application that needs to have its own updater. Okay, just look at the NVIDIA driver. Oh, hey, look, do you want creator studio drivers or do you want game ready drivers? Or do you want, you know, you have an update to the GeForce Now experience or whatever the hell their, their application is. So, I mean, you know, the, there's some there's some improvements that people can do. And yes, I know about WinGet and everything else, but the, the fact of the matter is like from the pointy quickie users, none of that shit matters. So I, I can't rag on his experience thus far because there's nothing to rag on really. Like he's a more technically inclined user, even if he's like a Windows power user dropping over to Linux, like whatever. Like I'm not gonna rag on that. I do I do find it fascinating um on his observations about Linux. Words, it was on to the big part. The big thing that I want to do when installing Linux, 
that was going to take my installations to the next level. GPU pass through with Vert Manager. Unfortunately, when following a guide to set this up, I found out the hard way that I needed a second GPU. Now coincidentally, I did have one, a GTX 970, but unfortunately I didn't have enough power cables and this plan failed. Now I will specify, I do have an AM4 motherboard, so technically I could go buy a later AMD Ryzen 5000 with integrated graphics to act as a second graphics device and not have to change many components. But all the solutions either point to setups that could be hard, like single GPU pass-through, or buying hardware, neither of which I want to do. So I decided to take another route with that. I also want to specify that I tried different VMs, no matter what, my programs that I needed crashed because they probably required real graphics drivers and pass through and not simple virtual ones. Then I tried to install DaVinci Resolve, which is a quote unquote Linux supported program. However, this definition is very general. What this actually means is that it's professionally supported by enterprise distros. So that means if you try to install it on anything that isn't what DaVinci Resolve supports or that doesn't have a similar base to what distros DaVinci Resolve supports, you're going to be in for a tough time. Fortunately, we live in an age where you can actually do stuff like set up operating system containers for stuff like this. So I followed a tutorial that outlined setting up a Fedora 37 distro box container. And I got all the way through and even installed the program. The only issue was drivers. For some reason, DaVinci Resolve would not open because it did not detect the driver for OpenGL, even though I went ahead and installed it for that container. After that, I even tried to redo the installation using CentOS 7, but I couldn't get past installing the graphics driver. So as it turns out, they're not kidding with the requirements for DaVinci Resolve. And this is something that I'll talk about later. Surprisingly, one part that went really well, and that I guess is one of Linux's strong points, is that since it's open, and everyone wants to develop drivers for everything to get all hardware working on as many systems as possible, my Wacom tablet worked immediately after installation without any tweaks. On Windows and Mac OS, you have to install the driver. So, uh, I know this is going to sound bad when I say this, but it's like, DaVinci Resolve is one of those, like, yeah, you can get it to work. Um, I got really nothing on that one because, like, personally, I don't use DaVinci Resolve for me, so I can't really speak too much on it. I can only speak for the install process that I've gone through, but that's on Arch. It's not through Debian, and it's not through DistroBox. I'm not trying to do GPU pass-through. I'm not trying to do any of that stuff. So I can't speak to that particular experience. I know when you're talking as far as official support, I think it's important to note that they give those for a very specific reason, because you can't support everything. You really can't. So you can't support every distro. So I think it, I think it's fair when black magic decides like these are the distros we support. I think, I think it's a fair, um, assessment for them to do. And they generically are looking at things like CentOS specifically because of things like the movie industry that does use like CentOS machines and stuff on the back end. They're going to support it with their video editor because it just makes business sense. I would recommend if you're going to go that route, maybe look at Lightworks. Um, I'm not sure what they've been doing lately. I haven't really looked, excuse me. I haven't really looked much at Lightworks as far as what they've been up to in, in the back end of stuff. So uh, I would look at that for another potential professional video editor as well. Driver to make it work. And that driver can sometimes even break. So this was a pleasant surprise during all. And yes, the the Wacom, Wacom, however you want to pronounce it, is very much built into the kernel. So a lot of that stuff works. Um, sometimes, depending, sometimes the pressure sensitivity doesn't always work on some. Of that that is one thing I've noticed because I have certain devices that are, you know, Wacom wake, wake uh, pens and screens and stuff, and they don't always necessarily work. But that could be a touchscreen calibration issue, so I can't speak specifically 
or the tablet that you have for, for Wacom. So, but yeah, generically, most of that stuff's built into the kernel now. Because, like you said, everybody wants the, as much hardware to work as possible because they have hardware that they bought that so they want to work on their preferred OS. Funny how that works. During all this, I managed to set up all my apps and configure my environment to be how I wanted it. And honestly, it's a step up. My install doesn't feel slowed down because I have some apps installed and everything works smoothly and it's stable. So ultimately, this was worth it. But this doesn't come without a few caveats. While I think that Linux is a lot more beginner friendly and approachable than say five to six years ago, if you're not willing to use a terminal or can't fix issues, you're gonna have issues. Sometimes it was dependencies or for example, I tried to use Tmod Loader, but I had to reinstall Terraria three times to make sure I'm not running the Proton version. I think it's just inevitable with stuff like Linux. By the end of it, you'll definitely reach a stable experience, but on the way, it's not as simple. I also wanted to bring this up from earlier when I was talking about requirements with DaVinci Resolve. I wanted to bring up the very inconvenient, seemingly unfixable issues with Linux and software in it. This can be attributed to anything, but it is most prominent on Linux. I'm at a place where I'm so close to installing something or on the verge of completing something, but then I get an error and then it kind of comes to a loop or a dead end. It's frustrating. And if you're losing Linux, I think that's something that you're going to have to get used to, even though it's a universal issue with everything. A couple things, I did manage to install some Windows programs on Linux. So the, the basis of the need of the CLI is relative to the choice of distro and your comfort of skill level. Honestly, if you you, you didn't like the hand-holding of Pop! OS, well, the hand-holding is for the new user. So, again, I think it's relative to the distro of, of choice. You chose Debian, which is going to require more manual stuff to do, so it requires the CLI more often than not. That's just the reality. Example, I use Garuda for mine. I can do everything in the GUI all I want, but reality is I, I personally just dropped to the command line because of the, they changed the command on the updates to Groot attack update as opposed to, you know, pseudo Pac-Man, Pac SYU stuff. So I kind of get it and I get what you're saying, but again, a lot of it's based on choice of distro more than anything else. As far as fixing apps, that that's relative because um, I'm always speaking to the one that you were specifically talking about. I'm not talking about wine apps and I'm just like default Linux apps. You were trying to get DaVinci resolve to work in like the, the loop of stuff that just wouldn't work again. Uh, I'm assuming beyond CentOS seven, you were trying to do this on Debian so that loop is understandable that you're going to get in because it's not a supported distro that you're on as far as the the drivers and that stuff again the, that is based on your application choice and your distro choice because like garuda you can install the the nvidia drivers if you have to or you go that route it, it's literally just through the GUI, through the applications. If you do pop OS, they're on the ISO, so you don't even need to worry about them. So it's relative to the distro again. But overall, I, like, I don't have any issues with his experience or his conclusions that he's coming to, like his, his personal experience that he's had. Next, and this was really surprising since it usually shouldn't work. So the first program I installed was Ableton Live and it was listed as silver on bottles so i was not that confident that it would work but surprisingly it did work vst samples saving exporting i was honestly blown away that this was even possible it was a very smooth experience there were about three issues during installation but they were all fixable the only issue was that there was a little bit of delay but i don't mind it all that much considering i'm running a program that shouldn't even work for this operating system I even managed to run some older Windows XP programs, but that kind of made sense since compatibility would be better for those. I also managed to successfully install Epic Games Launcher so I can access all my free games, and they work fine, which is awesome. Use heroic, that's all I'm gonna say. 
you 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 want to talk about native stuff. At least with heroic, they you know to point the finger at the right people, not Linux, but you'll know to point the finger on any issues back to uh, Epic if there's issues. So heroic it ties your GOG and your Epic stuff all into one, and your Amazon Prime gaming stuff as well. So that's the one I would go with over installing a wine version of uh, EGS because then it breaks and then you can God knows how long you're going to wait for updates and the install scripts and blah, 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 blah. It, it, like if you just want to like a what path of least resistance, I would recommend heroic over, over um, that one, <laughs> that way of going about it. And finally, there were a few programs I couldn't install. And I want to tell you what I did about that. My affinity programs unfortunately couldn't install through bottles and couldn't run on virtual machines. But it's not that bad since I could just use them on my MacBook Air and they work smooth despite the fact that it's dual core. And if I can't use those programs, I'll just use Photopea since it's a really great and insane website for what it can do. Not to mention, you only need to go to it once and you can run it locally offline without internet for free. And of course, DaVinci Resolve. Couldn't get it to work, maybe I will another day. But until then, I'm using Caden Live to edit videos. It's honestly really good for a FOSS video editor, so for now I'll keep using it. And that's it, that's my Linux experience. It was honestly pretty smooth, some issues, which I think will happen to anyone, but as a desktop operating system, it's really solid for me. I'm glad to have made the upgrade, and I'm glad that I'm more familiar with Linux now. So see you later. I don't have, sorry, if this is going to be kind of a boring reaction video. I don't have a lot of yelling and screaming. Um, DaVinci Resolve has always been problematic. It doesn't matter what show distro you use, honestly, personally. Uh, but just from my experience, even with using like AUR installers and all the other stuff or the install scripts that uh, Blackmagic gives you through their stuff. Uh, uh, insert 9,000 other different ways. Anyway, um, I believe you had mentioned photo P. Um, there are other specific apps that you can use. Uh, dark table. Uh, what is it? Dark table, raw therapy. There's also, um, it's a curl product and yeah, curl aftershot pro. There, there's a few others for photo style stuff. Um, but yeah, Photo P is a, is a fantastic alternative, and the way they make it available offline is fantastic too. So overall, like I don't have really much of a, a lot of yelling and screaming to do. So like, if people thought I was gonna yell and scream because he had a bad experience and oh my god, he did it wrong, no, like he's giving his personal experience. He's showing that he did the research, looked for commands, and did you know his his quote unquote due diligence or you know, wrestling terms paid his dues. So there's there's really no yelling and screaming and he's not making broad general statements that are fact. He's just making broad general statements based on his experience difference. So I think he, he's on the right path. I think the only thing I disagree with him is that I think it uh the the CLI usage is dependent on the distro choice because, as he said, he felt like Pop OS hand holds him too much. Okay, well, you know, he felt like the niceties of Ubuntu were a little too niceties, apparently. So he went with Debian. Like, whatever. Like, that's your, your choice. But I would disagree with the, the need for the CLI. <laughs> Again, based on your distro choice. But... No complaints about his experience. No complaints about his approach. I think he came to a valid conclusion based on his experience. Um, as far as video editors in Linux, again, I, I you know I mentioned Lightworks. If you're looking for the proprietary stuff, if you're looking at open source video editors, there there's Flowblade, Caden Live, OpenShot, uh, Olive. Cinelear GG is the one I prefer, but every, uh, that's a learning curve and a half. There's a ton of decent ones that you can look at for that. Shotcut is another one. So, other than some application recommendations, 
I, I, I really got nothing else to add, guys. So props to him making the switch, and props to him if it works out for him. If it doesn't, cool, whatever. And that, you know, go where the technology you need does what you need it to. That's kind of my take in general. So other than that, I will catch you guys on the flip. Indiegala, Patreon, all that jazz is down below. Peace.